Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at some gameplay and offer some impressions on an upcoming war game from Princeps Games called Freezing Inferno. Now this game is about the winter war between the Soviet Union and Finland, 1939 to 1940. I'm going to show some gameplay and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the impressions of what the gameplay is like. Keeping in mind that this is a prototype version of the game. Here's a look at the map at the beginning of the battle in 1939. So the, the battle consists of eight turns, and it's very much a, the Russian forces are going to go, then the Finnish forces are going to go, although there are some reactionary actions and some defensive actions that sides can take with their fighters and anti-aircraft as the battle plays out. Mostly it's a I go, then you go kind of affair over the course of eight turns. Now the, the Russian objectives are to take uh, two of the three main Finnish cities while not losing more than five of their own. And the, we'll take a look at where these main objectives are for the Russians as they go forward. But what I've done for this game uh, right now is the, the game comes with eight kind of random or predetermined, not random, but predetermined setups for both sides. So I randomly picked a Finnish setup and I randomly picked a Russian setup. And so let's take a look as this battle begins on what the situation looks like and what some of our thinking might be like for each side. So if we start here in the south, we see we have some Russian forces, a, a decent amount of Russian forces uh, massed here along this isthmus, but they'd have to go through these fortifications. Now Helsinki, one of the Russian objectives, sits way over here, the bottom left corner of the map. And my thoughts is the Russians are, rather than trying to slam through this uh, line of fortifications, I have a different idea for what I think we're going to do with them. So let's go to the north here as we kind of move forward. We can see as we get up in here, we have the second Russian objective sits right up here to the west now along the coast. This is one of our two cities. And the Russian setup, if you would, or the Russian initial starting position here, very much has a mass of troops here. And you have to keep your troops in supply within seven hexes and have a trace of a line of supply within that seven hex uh, radius of a headquarter. And we have three headquarters. We have one down here along that isthmus where we've got to, that are keeping those units in supply. So really what that means is we can, we can make two thrusts if you would, with the Russian forces. I think with this massive group here, our rough plan is going to have them push west because I think we can overpower these units here. Just by the, the vastness of numbers, I think we can overpower the units here, then have them press down to the southwest, heading for Helsinki, forcing those units down here in the fortifications to have to pull back to defend. So this army group here in the center is going to push straight west and then southwest. We have another mass of Russian forces up here, which sits uh, kind of in the central portion of the map, but we're gonna have them. The, the Finnish defense here has a big gap, as we can see, right here between there's some air units here. The, the northernmost defensive unit is right here. So I think we can push this army group straight through these lines here, then have them cut to the southwest and take this second objective. Now, the, as the Finnish, I'm kind of thinking, what can we try to do with them? They allotted a number of defensive troops way up here in the north to the third objective. And there's really nothing in here. So as quick as we can, I think we have to bring these defensive forces down into the central portion of Finland here. Maybe, perhaps, threatening these Russian cities because there is, is an industrial capacity factor here. So if we could take these Soviet cities here on the east, we can reduce their military output and force them to respond to that as well. So Finland, of course, on the defensive, Russia has a lot of work to do, but we'll get started here. Now I'm gonna play through uh, probably about two turns or so, then we're gonna see what it looks like. I'm gonna play out some of the gameplay here to show what it looks like, uh, and then talk a little bit about where we go from there, and then kind of give some impressions on the gameplay so far. So I'll see you as we, oh, a couple other things I wanted to mention before we start. Um, we're playing with the optional rules, so let's take a look at the technology and the weather and such. So I'm playing with the, uh, the optional technology rules here. I think what I'm gonna to try to do as the finish here, which we can see all of these positions start here, we can spend, um, industrial capacity to improve these technologies. I think we might go with these tactical ones here. 
For the Russians, I might actually try uh, Meteorology. Again, I, I haven't played the game a lot yet, so a lot of this is kind of experimental, and this is a prototype version as well, so I'm kind of testing things out here a little bit. Might do a mix of the military improvements and then perhaps Meteorology, or perhaps just uh, kind of keep working on numbers here and try to overwhelm the Finnish forces to spend our industrial capacity on building up our forces and keep sweeping across the land. I'd also like to point out that there is a weather metric in the game, and right now we're going to roll each turn to see how the weather changes. Right now we've got frozen lakes, so infantry can cross them, and it is clear weather, so no other impact. And this will change as the, the, the war proceeds. One last note before we start the war, there is a diplomacy option. As it starts out, it is pro-Finland because of the Soviet invasion. Um, as the Soviet forces, we might try to influence things a little bit more in our favor, but I'm not sure. I'm going to see how many uh, industrial capacity points are left over to spend on various things. So let's start the war, and we'll see you in a couple of turns. So we're into turn three out of eight now. Roughly, I think each turn is about a month or so. And so this would be January 1940 as we look at this. And uh, Soviets, Soviet Union had pretty good success. Russia has had a pretty successful and strong invasion so far, but the situation very much up in doubt. Let's take a look now at the situation, how it's gone for them here. If we look down on the isthmus here, I, um, they did decide to push forward. So they are kind of uh, battling now over these fortifications. And I've had to withdraw some of these Finnish forces to kind of plug some holes to the north here. As we can see, the Soviets if we just kind of follow the line, the front line here, the Soviets making some pretty significant advances, especially if we look back here. This red line is the Soviet Finnish border. They've pushed a significant amount into Finland here, making their way across there. Now, they still have kind of a long way to go here. I mean, over here, for example, is the, uh, one of the Finnish objectives. And then well down here to the south is the second Finnish objective, Helsinki. So way down here in the corner, we can just barely see it in the video now. So they have a long way to go, but they're making good progress. The basic Finnish strategy has been kind of bend, but don't break, um, with kind of some spot attacks where we've been able to make them. Now, if we go up here, it's interesting up to the north here. We can see the Russian front pushing forward. Uh, they have suffered some significant losses in this battle up here. Now, one thing I will mention, when we did the unboxing, a number of people had comments and thoughts on the map, myself included. One of the things I had hoped for was having the historical names on some of the cities and things like that, because right now it's just generic city. And I know they did make a second map that I think is going to be, you're going to get two maps with the game. One's going to be, this map's going to be on one side. The other map is going to be a map that has a lot more of the historical names and has a different art style to it as well. So uh, you can Take your pick for whichever one you want. Um, I would be looking forward to them with the historical names because I'd like to kind of know where in Finland this stuff is happening, of course, for sure. But uh, that's a little bit beside the point. Let's take a look up here to the north where we can see a rather interesting development. Those forces that we had kind of isolated up towards the northern part of the city because Russia basically didn't really address this part of the campaign. Now, I've been a little bit aggressive with them as the Finnish, moving them out of the northern city up here, down here, and they can take this Russian city, which will actually put a pretty big sting on the Russian military capacity. Likewise, they can come down here. Now, as the Russians, we have a bit of uh, military capacity that we can use to reinforce now on this third month of the campaign. So I think we're going to try to do that. And we have to bring some troops over there as the Russians and answer this. Otherwise, they can come down and just chew up all this military capacity. So I'm going to have to pull some forces off of the attack, slowing it down a little bit, which is unfortunate as the Russians, but fortunate as the Finns. Now, what I thought we could do now a little bit, um, oh, also one kind of thing, let's take a look at the technology uh, track here. So the Soviets successfully used military capacity to increase the range of their B4 203 millimeter howitzers. So the Soviet artillery now has a range of five instead of four. That's significant as the Soviet artillery is pretty strong here. For the Finnish, they tried to get the White Death Sniper, which would be a plus one attack modifier for Finnish infantry when attacking Soviet infantry. Um, but they did not get that. They failed on it. So I think they're going to try this next turn to try to get that. They have recruited some sabotage. They have been able to develop some sabotage, which would stop some Soviet units. They'll use that on this turn. So on the technology front, uh, things going pretty well for the Soviets. And hopefully for the Finnish, they'll be able to get the white death sniper factor in there too. One of the things I'd like to do in this video now is to show a little bit about how combat and how a turn progresses to get a sense for gameplay. 
First thing that happens is we pick an event card. This is numbered three. There are three of these, and in any game, only one of the three is in play. So we'll flip this over, and these effects will apply for this whole turn here. The Battle of Arate Road, and the, basically this is describing, I think the font is going to be changed on the final version from this prototype card too. I do agree, this is a little bit tricky to read in there. Uh, this was a, basically a failure of the Soviet attack here where they got, they had to eventually retreat. And the consequence here is that the USSR lose six of their military capacity. The players, reinforce, the players then reinforce their units in this turn. So, uh, so far the Soviet Union has amassed, you have this currency amounts here, they've amassed over 50 of them. So they have lost, we'll take off six of them here, there's five and six. That's actually going to hurt them a little bit because uh, they are going to need to develop some military capacity, reinforce some units, perhaps even recruit a new unit to handle that threat for the north. So every little bit that gets whittled off there hurts their, uh, their war efforts here. So that event card is now done. So our next action is to handle the weather. We're going to roll a 10-sided die to adjust the temperature here. Last turn it was very icily cold here. We get a 5. This is a temperature drops. Move 1 to the left. It cannot drop anymore, so it's going to stay here at the icy. So that means deeply frozen lakes, infantry and artillery can cross. Now we're going to roll a d12 to figure out what the precipitation is like. We get a 3. 3 is clear. So we had snow in the last turn, now it's going to be clear and there's no effect for that. So the only impact of winter right now is that both artillery and infantry can cross the lakes. The next step is this, because this is turn, turn three, on, on selected turns, you can replenish and reinforce your units. And this is one of the reinforcement turns. How this works is that uh, we kind of have to learn about the military capacity first. We'll notice here on this counter track that the finish counter is on the 22 here. And then the USSR counter is up to 32. And what basically that comes from is that each one of these cities, for example, this city here has a military capacity factor of three. Um, if it's your home city, you get the full capacity. But if your enemy takes the city, so if we come over here, for example, and look at this city here, when the Soviet Union, when Russia took this city, Finland loses two capacity, but Soviet Union only gains one. So as a result of those kind of Finnish cities falling, the Soviet Union capacity right now is 32, and you get those points at the end of each turn. And now the Soviets get to spend them, as well as the Finland, Finland gets to spend them, to reinforce units by set rules. So one of the things I'm hoping to do, the Soviet Union right now, because their offensive has gone pretty well, they're up to, what is it, 10, oh my god, they've got 40, looks like 45, uh, uh, military capacity points and you use a cost chart basically to bring in some reinforcements. I'm hoping to reinforce this armored unit here which has been knocked down to one stack and to kind of also talk a little bit about how units work. Units, uh, it's a very unique system. So units get a combat factor, an attack and defense factor across the top, but it's that isn't the total. You get that factor plus the number of units in your stack. So for example, this Finnish art, um, armor has an attack strength of 5, but we're at the highest capacity of this stack, which is a 5. That's the stacking limit. So 5 plus 5 gives it a strength of 10. This Russian armor has a defensive value of 4. It's only got one unit in the stack, so that gives it a 5. So this would have a strength of 10 and one is a 5. And then you just compare that ratio because one unit is always attacking one unit. So you're not, you move a unit and it attacks. You don't combine units for attacks. I mean, you can, they can go sequentially, but you, it's a very simple combat system that, that, that actually works pretty fast and works pretty well. So anyway, the Soviet Union right now will go first. We've got about 45 points worth of military capacity. Finland, much reduced, has only 28. So we will have to be a little bit judicious on where and how we reinforce. I'm going to do that now and then I'll show the impact of that. So from the Soviet side, I really feel like they need to address these threats coming from the north. So they are going to spend... 22 of their 44, uh, 45 capacity to get a, an entire new infantry stack, an infantry unit here, division perhaps, and then they're going to do likewise with another 22, and they can be built, located anywhere beside an existing headquarters, and then the plan will be to send them to try to constrain this, this attack from the, this threat from the Finnish north. So that leaves them only with one 
military capacity left, which is perhaps a little bit unwise because you can also spend military capacity on your technology improvements and diplomacy. So they won't get a chance to do that. But I feel like this is the most pressing need. Uh, they're going to lose that five capacity city up to the north, uh, just to the east here on the map. That's going to fall for sure. But I'd like to prevent this one falling as the Soviets. And as the Finnish, the idea is to keep trying to collapse down on this northern flank to see if they can force the Soviets to react and slow down the thrust towards the west here. Because otherwise, Finland's in serious trouble. All right, so Finland is going to uh, try to address this by they're going to create a new infantry unit up in here and drop it up here. Now, there's an extra two military capacity cost whenever you create a new unit. So an infantry uh, counter, a strength point here, a stack point, counts as four. So this would be 14. Four times three plus two is 14 to build that one up here. That will give them a little bit more flexibility with this northern uh, kind of potential, which I think is going to be critical to the Finnish, to a Finnish victory. Now, we also spent, as Finland, spending three more units. So we want to try to position these to reinforce some of the units in this gradually weakening line that we have here. So I'm going to kind of any unit in supply can get reinforcements. This one is only a stack of two that I broke down from a stack of five. So we'll drop one in there. I feel like this line has to hold here too. The basic idea is to try to bend but don't break. And then down here, towards the city, we have another two strength unit. Let's see if we can make that a three. So just trying to reinforce this, throwing some bodies into the line, hoping to hold off the Russian advance. All right, to kind of give a sequence, the sample of how gameplay works, I'm going to just kind of take this cluster of Soviet forces at the beginning of their turn now and take some actions with you just to give a sense for how things work. So the first thing that we probably want to do is to start moving this Soviet infantry up to the northeast so they can start to handle this threat here. Now, I think the quickest way to get there is going to be along the road here and then up. This, again, is the border. It doesn't influence movement. So we're going to take these... Russian units right here, this new infantry stack. We're going to move them up through the woods, which is a cost of four. And you can see here on the unit, it's got a movement of 11. So that's four. And along the road is two, six, eight, ten. And that one existed. So it's back into the Soviet Union trying to move up here to answer this threat from the north. Likewise, we're going to take this infantry and do a similar action here, which will be three, six. No, nope, we can't go there because they can't end up there. They'll have to go, oh, they can go across, nope, they can't go across the river and they can't stay on a, a lake there. So go three, six, nine, I think is the best they can do right now. So our infantry units moving up to try to handle this threat from the, from the north here. Likewise, we might see if we can get this air to attack this ground unit. One, two, three, four, five, it can. So that would be good. So we're going to have this air unit come up and they can just reach these infantry units here. So uh, first, let's start with our bombers. So the bombers have a range of 17 hexes. This is about eight, I think, or nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So plenty in range. There is no anti-aircraft in range and no Finnish air forces that can intercept these bombers. So the bombers have a strength of six. Five is a stack, so it's six plus five is 11. The infantry has a strength of defensive strength of three. Their stack is five, so it's three plus five is eight, so it's 11 to eight. And we're going to use the air to ground chart here, which we can see. And then basically, now one of the cool things that I wanted to mention about the game too. So there's luck mitigating dice. And basically what that means is these are custom dice. I'll show them here on the dice roll. They, it's a 20-sided die that only has the numbers 1 to 8. However, the number 1 and the number 8, which are the extreme combat results, only exist on the die once. So basically there's only a 5% chance you're going to get the extreme results. Most of the results are clustered in the middle, the 4s and 5s or the 3s and 6s. So it's going to reduce the number of kind of extreme results and give you more centered combat results. I thought that was a pretty cool idea. And uh, this is kind of, you can use this in lieu of the 10-sided die if you don't want to. So let's go uh, air to ground combat. We had a ratio of 11 to 8. I'll show the chart here and we can see what's going to happen. We're just going to roll and apply the, the results results here. So we get a four on 11 to eight. We're looking up here. The four gives us a two defensive units lost. So the left number before the slash is offensive, which 
as an air to ground. It doesn't, you don't have any losses there. And then the right side is a two. Now they were attacking units that are in the clear. So there's no defensive modifiers there either. If it were on the ground, there would be a deep, on, on, like in woods, there'd be a minus one. So it would have been a three. But so the Finnish infantry here lose two strength points. And basically all we're going to do, take two units off the stack and that's reduced. So super simple combat system. And I think, um, you know, it, it's, it's considerably easier than uh, I anticipated it would be in terms of executing that. So these bombers go back and they have moved. Sometimes I've been, just to keep things sorted out, I've been tilting things to the side here. All right, I'm just kind of reaching over the camera. That's why it was a little bit tricky to do that there. So we still have our fighters left to go. Let's send our fighters have a range of 14, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They can go as well. So let's do this. Now, one thing I'm not 100% sure of is whether you have to get the air unit on top of the unit. I don't think you have to get it next to them to be able to do that. And so I think we're within the rules in doing this, but I'm not 100% sure. Strength of four plus five is nine. Defensive strength is three. Uh, on the right here, plus three is six. So nine to six for this one. Let's roll the next attack up. No, def no dice roll modifiers. We get a three, so nine against six with a three. It's another two lost. Wow, the Finnish infantry, Russian Air Force, taking a heavy toll on the Finnish infantry trying to take this city over here. But we'll bring them back. All right, so let's kind of keep moving through there. And then basically you kind of keep moving through the turn this way, but let's take a look a little bit at some interesting attacks we've got down here as the Soviet forces. Because basically what I'd like to do as the Soviets is to break this line here, this armor and this infantry that's holding back the Russian advance along that road here going to the west. So what we're going to do here, this is the Russian artillery. Normally it has a range of four because they have the technology, the technology advancement that's five. So we're going to drop it right on this armor, I think, here. So four plus five is nine. The defense there is four plus five is nine. And they are in clear terrain as well. So artillery against units in clear terrain has no modifiers. So it's nine against nine. We'll roll on the attack chart here. Now this is ground to ground, a different combat results table. But because it's artillery, there's no offensive losses that are taken. So let's see what we get here. Nine against nine with a six. That's a pretty good result. Gives us a one. The defender retreat, but as an artillery result, uh, they do have, to, they have the option to retreat. Okay, so we lose one of these precious Finnish armored units, and we have the option to retreat, but we are not going to. We're going to stay there. So now the Russian infantry has fired. Let's kind of move up here to the, uh, sorry, the Russian artillery has fired. We've kind of depleted our attack up here. I probably should have spent some more forces on this Russian armor, but it's so expensive to replace it. Let's go forward with the infantry, trying to turn this corner here as well. So this will be two plus three is five, attacking against four plus four, uh, sorry, two plus five is seven, attacking against a defense of four plus four is eight. Ugh, that's not the best attack there, is it? But yeah, we'll do it. Seven against eight, here we go. Ground to ground, seven against eight. And again, you just look up the ratio and then roll the die for it. So seven against eight is 81 to 99% get a five and they're in the clear still. So five gives us a not result, which is no offense the next turn. That's a pretty good result for the Soviets there. So we can drop this counter. I'll do it after it's underneath them. And that means basically in the finish turn, they can't do anything. They can't move and they can't attack. So somewhat neutralize this, but haven't really taken advantage of what else they could do to get around it yet. All right, so I think we're, we're taking a little bit of a look at gameplay now, at least at how movement and combat works. You get a sense for how things go and how the combat results are played. I thought I'd offer up now some impressions on the game as I've played it so far, some of the things that I like uh, and some of just kind of some general thoughts. I think I wouldn't consider this a full review because, you know, again, it is a prototype version and there's some things I want to mention that are coming up that, uh, that might be uh, helpful to know here. So first of all, a little bit about the prototype and what's coming that I know. Now I know, as I mentioned earlier, there's gonna be a second map on the back of this one. This map is about 38 and a half inches on the vertical and 20 something on 25, I think 27 on the, on the width here. So it's a pretty hefty, pretty 
pretty big footprint, but not, you know, in incredibly massive here. Um, the hexes are nice and big and the units stack up well. So that is going to be one difference in terms of that. There's going to be a second side to the map. There's also potentially going to be a miniatures version, which means that this, for example, an infantry unit here, in, or an armored unit here, is going to be replaced by one small miniature tank on a dial-based platform. I'll show an image of it here from one of the prototypes that has a one to five strength element on it. So instead of having the stacks of counters, you'll have an, a, a miniature that you can adjust the strength of from one to five. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about the counter stacks in a second because I think that's worth noting. So that's coming up. The other things I will mention, there's seven, the way the game starts out is you can, you do a blind setup using the setup uh, paper. So each side sets their own units up, then you compare and you set them up. There's also eight starting setup positions that you can just pick from, which is what I did in this one. So I think if you're thinking about playing, if you want to get into it fast, Rather than doing the blind setup, you can just pick a starting position random and then go at each other kind of from that way. If you want to get into that tactical element of setting up the unit, you can take that extra step to plot out your starting positions and then you put them in. Both fun ways to play, quicker to get into the game if you use the predetermined setup routines. Now, the other thing that I want to mention too, for, especially for players that are interested in solo, is that they are creating an AI bot for it. I saw the outline for it, but I haven't seen the details of it. I don't know how it's gonna work, haven't had a chance to test it and things like that, but they are working to create a bot that's going to have kind of a priority system for solo play. So between the predetermined setups and, in a, and a kind of a, the bot there that could control forces, this might be a pretty engaging solitaire game. Um, and I think those are the things that I know that are coming up. More information will be on the Kickstarter in case I've missed something. I do know, again, that map, the second side map is going to be different. I think they're going to change some of the font on the print that we see here. And again, I wouldn't take anything really in a prototype version as set in stone. So I think there could be some changes that you'll want to check out as you look at that, that final version there. So now I've got about three or four hours under my belt in terms of playing the game. I've gone through the game once and kind of working on it now in a second time and things like that. So I've got a sense, I think, for how the gameplay rolls and how things work. So I thought I would offer up some impressions on play so far. I wouldn't count this as a full review, but just some general impressions. Final words, some thoughts and impressions and stuff like that with two caveats. One, this is a prototype, so we're not looking at the final version of the game. Some things are going to change. Some things I haven't had a chance to look at, like the AI bot for the solo system. So I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, so there's some factors in here. You know, if if there's miniatures, how are those going to work and things like that. So those are things I haven't seen. And then second, I've played a game and a half, so I don't want to draw too many conclusions about gameplay without playing it a few more times. Uh, I will say, the game, as it stands right now, I'm really enjoying it. And, and I'm going to be totally honest, as I was setting it up, and as I had kind of read through the rules and things like that, I had kind of some misgivings. I thought, a couple thoughts. One is the stacking system of five units that are stacked up with the way that you pull the stacks off for strength and stuff like that. I mean, there's five counter sheets. It's a lot of punching. I'm looking at all these units. There's some massive stacks. I'm like, this is going to be unmanageably clunky to play. But most of the stacks, a good half of the stacks, I'd say, are actually off the side of the map that are used uh, for reinforcements for certain units. So you're really only playing with about half of those. And the map's so big and the units are spread out enough that I mean, there are a couple, like I knocked off the units when I, in the video when I was reaching over the camera ladder and stuff like that. But other than that, I think there's only been a couple times where I kind of had to resort things and stuff like that. There's surprisingly, it's surprisingly manageable because there's a relatively limited amount of units on the map and the units are so spread out that I really, I like the system. And then you're breaking them down as the battle goes on. So the units get stacks, get smaller and stuff like that, rearranging them. But it's very, it's much more manageable than I thought it was going to be. And to get into the fun part, right? So my concern's kind of gone. The fun part is it plays fast. I mean, this is a game that you're, because you're moving one unit and attacking with one unit and your combined arms, if you would, are gonna be kind of a sequence of those turns. So you're gonna, you're gonna unload with your artillery, you're gonna bring in your air, you're gonna get hit by anti-aircraft, you're gonna intercept it maybe, then you're gonna bring in your ground units, you're gonna hit with your ground units. You know, it, it's, it's a, it's a very quick moving system when you're moving through these stacks. A lot of the units you're moving rather than moving and attacking. So, you know, turns about 20 minutes or so, probably two to three hours to play a game. And also, one other thing to mention, both games that I've played, I've played with all three of the optional rules. Weather, technology, and diplomacy are all optional. And that kind of brings me to a second point that I think is worth mentioning about the game. Um, 
when I was uh, when the developer reached out, one of the things that he had mentioned was this is by the way their second war game. Their first is March on the Drina. One of the things that he mentioned was he wanted to take a lot of the lessons he learned from that game and bring them to this game. And he also hoped in the end product that this would be a game that would be very friendly for beginners to war games. I kind of thought he was crazy when he's talking about his stack system. And as I was reading through the rules and things like that, I'm like, yeah, this is not a beginner friendly war game. And then it's kind of funny. Some games. Like I've read, I've had games where you you read the rules and then you try to play it, and it's so complicated. In other games, you kind of read the rules. This didn't feel complicated to read the rules. I think the rules are 20 pages Word document right now. They're going to be a different size in the final version. It actually it took me like an hour to read through them. There's some things now in playing. There's some questions I've got, but I've been kind of relaying them to the developer, and he's kind of giving me answers. And I got a feeling some of those things will probably be built into the last rule set and things like that. Because again, prototype and stuff like that. But Reading through the rules, I was like, wow, this feels like it's going to be a little bit kind of fiddly as you go through it, but it's actually not. It's, it's, it plays simpler than it looks, if that makes any sense. It's fast, it moves quickly, and it's fun. I, the, the way the three cities in Finland are positioned, you know, it gives you some options as the Russian player as to which way you want to go. You're going to go north, central, south, north, south, central, south, central, north. You've got some different attack options there as the Finnish player. You're, you're, you're trying to absorb, right? But you've got options to attack and opportunities to attack. So it's not like you're kind of this pin cushion that can't do anything. Um, the variable setups, the, the hidden setup management, the AI bot, there's just a lot of features in here that I think have shown a lot of attention to detail. I feel like it's a game that's been play tested and tested a good amount and the systems feel solid and they feel balanced. It, so it, with that in mind, um, I feel like the final product is a game that you're going to be able to come back to and play quite a bit and explore a lot of strategies. It almost feels like, in that sense, like a, you know, one of the classic war games where you've got, uh, you can play it a lot of different times, explore different strategies, and it's going to play fast. And I do think, especially if you chop out the optional rules, that this actually is, even though it doesn't look that way, it is a game that you can play with someone who's new to war gaming. I mean, it's gonna take a little determination like any war game, but it is something that you could play, I think, with someone that's new to war games and they can have fun. It plays much simpler in terms of fiddliness of rules and complexity. It's just not there. You're spending most of your time thinking about strategy. Once you play through like three or four turns, you start to get a sense for how things work and how attacks work and how defense works and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, um, it's a fun game. It's a few other things I wanted to mention. I really like the anti-luck dice. That's like the coolest thing ever. So you get a 20-sided die. You normally roll an eight-sided die. Sorry, I think I might have mentioned 10 earlier. You roll an eight-sided die. And then the idea is with the 20-sided dice that only has one one on it and one eight on it, you're mitigating those extremes so you get most of your results that are skewing towards the center of the combat results table. That's just so clever. That's pretty cool. And that's optional. You can use an eight-sided die if you want to instead. So, um, you know, some different factors in there that you can use to kind of change your rule. I like the combat system with the stacks of units. It actually works pretty cool. You know, you're, you're, and the ratios are so easy. You're just going, okay, I got strength of five. There's five there. That's 10. Defense is strength of four. That's four plus five is nine or whatever it would be. And you just compare on the chart and then you look it up. Um, so so that, goes, that all goes fast. Um, and it works out pretty well. It's just clever, clever system, I think, to try a game like this. Um, some things I, I kind of some some things that I think could what I would like to see. I think there's a few things that I would mention there. Um, I would like to see a player aid for terrain costs and movement. I've had to look those up in the rules. It'd be nice to have that on a chart somewhere so you don't have to kind of dig into the rules. You kind of remember them after like an hour or two, but still it'd be nice to be able to look those up so you knew what was going on for that. Um, I, I do wish there were a way to mark up. I wish there were a counter to mark units that were out of supply. Um, I've had to use some of the nationality markers for that, and it just feels a little bit awkward. I feel like um, there's a lot of extra <clears throat> kind of sabotage, uh, espionage counters, maybe trend changing some of those into, or the other side of some of those, into supply counters. So if you have units out of supply, you could mark those. The readability of the player aids. When I did the unboxing, I thought they was not an issue. As I played the game, I feel like uh, it is an issue. I hope they I hope they change the fonts on the combat results table on the event cards. 
on the uh, technology charts. It's just, it's tricky to read. And it, it, it did, I kind of was looking at things and hard to see a plus one or a minus one in a couple places too. So I hope they, I hope that changes. And I think they mentioned they're gonna change the fonts for the final version. One last thing, there are some rules that, uh, as I read through the rules, I had no questions. And as I've started to play, I've had some questions with the rules and so I'm relaying those on. But they're, they're more on the periphery. Uh, they're, they're littler things, things I wonder, things I'm not sure of, things I'm asking for clarification. So I don't feel like, I feel like the rule set is pretty solid as it is right now. And again, prototype, so it's gonna get tweaked over the course of the final development, I'm sure. So I think that, I think that kind of wraps it up. I think I've said, oh, I did want to mention one of the other things I like, I love the military capacity system and the way that you bring in reinforcements based on the supply from cities and things like that. That makes the cities pretty strategic uh, in terms of how you're trying to do pushing on and taking that extra city to reduce your enemy's capacity is really fun. There's a lot of interesting decisions as you're playing. It's just a good game. I mean, it's just, it's a solid war game covering the winter war, which is you know, not something that we have a ton of games on right now. So, yeah, uh, let me know if you have questions, what you think. I'm happy to answer them to the best of my ability. And again, I think the game comes to Kickstarter at the end of October 2022. And so uh, look for that there. And then they'll also kind of keep an eye out for what changes have been made there since the prototype. But happy to answer questions if you've got any. Um, if you have enjoyed this one and haven't yet seen the unboxing that shows some of the components in more detail, here's a link to that. Um, thanks so much for watching and have a great day.